class is now in session. I am Professor Hockey, and today we'll be discussing another Sharks player review. And this time around, we've got Sharks defenseman Mario Ferraro. And Ferraro is a bit of an interesting player because it kind of feels as though he has been with the team for a very, very long time. And that is technically true, at least relative to the rest of the Sharks roster. Outside of the two exceptions of Logan Couture and Mark Edward Vlasic, who have been with the team for many, many years at this point, Mario Ferraro is actually the longest tenured San Jose Shark player on the roster. And so even though he only has a few years under his belt, he feels kind of like this grizzled veteran for the San Jose Sharks. Now, Ferraro made his debut back in the 1920 season, where he was still relatively shielded as a defenseman, which is not a surprise for a rookie player. As such, he found himself frequently on either the second pairing or usually even the third pairing with players like Brendan Dillon or Redim Shemek. It was the 2021 season where Ferraro really had his breakout and find, found himself consistently paired with Brent Burns on the Sharks' top defensive pairing. Brent Burns has always been a defenseman who has found success when paired with defensive stay-at-home type of players. His best years in the NHL was when he was paired with Paul Martin in the 15-16 and 16-17 season, including a James Norris Trophy winning year for Brent Burns. Even currently with Carolina, he's played with more defensive guys like Jacob Slavin, one of the best defenseman, defensive defensemen in the entire league. And as such, when Ferraro was paired with him in 2021, he wasn't really given much of an opportunity to spread his wings offensively and instead was tasked with honing his defensive game more to fit in with Brent Burns. And for that first year, it worked out very, very well. This was an effective pairing for the San Jose Sharks. And while they would not manage to make the playoffs or have a ton of success in that particular year, it was still a good sign of things to come for Ferraro. And many people thought over the next couple of years, he could continue his upwards development trend and become a top pairing defenseman in the NHL. But instead, the trend reversed. And Ferraro actually seemed to get worse over the coming couple of years. In 21-22, still as a frequent partner of Brent Burns, things did not go nearly as well as the previous season. And then in 22-23, when Brent Burns had been traded away and Ferraro was trying to find a more consistent defensive partner, he bounced around with multiple different players like Matt Benning and Eric Carlson, never really truly found a home, and still struggled immensely when you took a look at some of the more advanced statistics. As such... Coming into the 23-24 season, now being the clear number one defenseman on the Sharks' defensive charts, considering Brent Burns was gone and now Eric Carlson was gone, it was expected that Ferraro would struggle immensely in the role that he would be thrusted into, at least by my expectations. And yet, instead, Ferraro actually looked pretty decent. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to say that he was in some under-the-radar best defensive defenseman in the entire league, very far from the truth, and I'm also wanting to point out that the Sharks defense as a whole this past season was really really bad one of the major issues and massive reasons for why they ended up finishing last place in the entire league so this is not me trying to rewrite history here for San Jose and say that actually the Sharks defense was somewhat redeemable that is not the case but when you compare it to any other defenseman on the Sharks roster this past season Ferraro filled his role very very well relative to those players and did it better than any of the others could could have done. Having, you know, Thrun be the number one guy or Ruda or Burroughs be the number one guy, the, the, the uh, defense for the Sharks this season would have been even more embarrassing than it already was. And so Ferraro actually ends up performing at a bit of a higher level than he was at last season. If we take a look at the statistics here, 78 games played, 3 goals, 18 assists for 21 points. That is obviously not a point total that really jumps off the page. It's not super impressive, but it is actually a career high for Mario Ferraro, which is a bit of a surprise considering there were a couple of full seasons, in, or not full seasons, but major seasons in the NHL where he was paired with Brent Burns on the top pairing for San Jose. You would think just being next to Brent Burns would give him a few free primary slash secondary assists, but didn't end up happening. 21 points, indeed a career high for himself. He did attempt to sort of get involved with the play a bit more this season, jump in aggressively, be more offensive, but through a combination of a couple of factors, the first of which is that 
Mario Ferraro wasn't really tasked with doing this in the earlier parts of his career, so he hasn't focused too much on that particular ability in his game. But also due to the fact that the Sharks just generally were not very good offensively this season, that's why his point holders are a bit more muted, even though he was attempting to be more involved. But it was nice to see the effort there at the very least. When it comes to his plus minus, we see a minus 38, which is obviously not great. But when you consider the fact that Ferraro was on the ice a ton this season and the Sharks were very heavily outscored throughout the entire year as the number one defenseman you would have probably expected him to have the worst plus minus on the entire team perhaps in the entire league but he actually didn't manage to hit that mark is actually a decent indication of his improvement this season defensively. Yes, it is a bit of a lower mark than last year where he was a minus 31, but it is very important to remember that there was no Eric Carlson this season or Timo Meyer this season who were at least putting up a ton of goals. The Sharks didn't have much offensive talent up front outside of like a singular group of very uh, just like three different players throughout the season. And even all three of those players were nowhere near the type of offensive output that either Meyer and in particular Eric Carlson actually managed to have so there wasn't those free pluses that Mario Ferraro was able to get last season instead pretty much every defensive partner he had this season it was a heavy minus and so the fact that he was only a few uh, points behind where he was last year is a testament to Ferraro's increased level of defensive play this season I felt and then when it comes to his time on ice, like I mentioned, it was quite clear he was going to be the number one guy for San Jose. His 22 minutes and 52 seconds is very high above the next closest defenseman, almost three full minutes above Henry Thrun, who is second in defensive ice time for the San Jose Sharks. And when you consider the fact that Mario Ferrero got very little power play ice time thus uh, throughout the season, because like I said, he's not much of an offensively inclined defenseman. If you actually take a look at players just looking at their even strength ice time and their shorthanded ice time, Mario Ferraro was actually within that top 10 amongst the entire NHL defensive core in those just two particular areas. So indeed, he was heavily relied on by David Quinn amongst some of the other great defensemen in the entire league. And so when it comes to his grade, like I said, it was not a super impressive season for Ferraro. I don't think he led the way and led a fantastic Sharks defensive output, but did he exceed expectations? Was he better than where he was at last year? Absolutely, I feel, and as such, he ends up with the grade of a C plus. And so the question becomes for Mario Ferraro, what is the future path for him over these next couple of years? There have been a bit of trade rumors over the past season that comes from Mario Ferraro's name, and while I don't necessarily think that there was anything super serious on the table at any point, what they say is that there, when there's smoke, there's fire, and so it is very possible that Ferraro's name was tossed around a bit. He's on a very favorable contract, and it should be noted that while he has never actually managed to have any postseason opportunities with the San Jose Sharks, he is the type of player who is very much built for the playoffs, the type of guy who is willing to lay down, lay it all down on the line, a character guy, a glue guy. He's not going to be a top pairing defenseman for any playoff team, but the player who you can toss onto your second or even third pairing defenseman and really raise your team's level of play, he would absolutely bring that there. So it is certainly possible for the Sharks to try and trade him at some point. It should also be pointed out that when the Sharks originally traded Timo Meyer a couple of seasons ago, they had said the reason for that, or one of the reasons, I guess, speculated for that, was that his age did not really fit into the Sharks' rebuilding window. Meyer was 26 at the time of being traded, and by the time this next season will start, Meyer Ferraro will also be 26 years of age. However... I will say I do think the Sharks should probably keep Ferraro on the team. Like I said, a heart and soul type of guy, very good locker room player. It feels as though he's probably one of the most talkative players in the locker room. And considering the fact that the Sharks' current captain, Logan Gatour, his future with the team is extremely up in the air just due to his injury that has kept him out for all of but six games this past season and is a big question mark for even if he'll be able to get a game in this upcoming season, it seems as though the next in line for the captaincy would almost certainly be Mario Ferraro and I think keeping a player like that on your roster so that in you know two three or even four years time when the Sharks do finally return to the playoffs Ferraro can be there can be that leader and really help pull this team together so unless the best possible trade does come up and Mike Greer just simply cannot say no I do think Ferraro should probably remain with the team and we can only hope that this year was a good indication that things will turn around for Ferraro at this point class dismissed.